Everybody, so a few people asked at ah! everybody, so a few people has asked me for a combat logging tutorial. More specifically, just preventing players from doing certain actions if they're in a fight or in combat, which is pretty self-explanatory. But it is a useful tutorial for PvP houses just in general, so I thought I'd go over it. Before we start, I just want to let you know that I did break my wrist recently, meaning that videos and streams and really anything from me is like 10 times slower. I did get a smaller cast, so it's a lot easier, but just know that if I haven't uploaded or you don't see much, just know that I'm probably not up for really getting on and doing stuff. I just, it does hurt. But without the way, I'll get started with a tutorial. So first you're going to want to start by setting up a poison loop. So let's go to the housing menu. And I did make a tutorial on that. So if you want a more informational guide, then check out that. Otherwise, I'm just going to go through a quick tutorial here. Go to the housing menu, go to house settings, go to event actions. In the player join, we are going to add a apply potion effect. This effect is going to be a poison. And for the duration, oops, for the duration, we're going to have it set to 2 million seconds. Meaning that while they're in the house, it'll pretty much, they'll keep the effect. The level will be 10, which is the max, and an override existing effects will be on. Then, because I'm assuming if you have a combat logging system, you have killing. So in the player respawn event, when they uh, lose their effect from dying, we'll just give it right back to them. So again, poison for 2 million seconds, level 10, and override existing effects. Now we're going to go to PvP plus damage settings and make sure poison slash wither damage is on. And then we're going to go to event actions, player damage, add a conditional. Inside this conditional, we'll check if the damage cause is poison, which if it is, then we will cancel the event and we'll come back to this later. Okay, so to start, we're going to go to our house settings. We're going to go to event actions and go to player damage. Inside here, we already have the conditional checking if the damage is poison and we'll just cancel the event so we don't actually take damage yet. We'll go back in there soon, but we're going to add another conditional in here. This conditional is basically going to check if... Uh, a stat which we'll call combat is equal to zero, which if it is, that means that the combat stat is not set. It is, they are not in combat. But we'll also check if the damage cause is a entity attack because otherwise the poison will trigger this and other things that we might not want will trigger this. So we'll just do entity attack. Then inside the if actions, We'll let the player know that they are starting combat. So we'll just set the subtitle to an empty text, just the R uh, color code. But in the subtitle, we'll just say, you entered combat. So basically what that first conditional is doing is checking if we were hit by a player, which if we were, then we'll just let the player know that they entered combat. But now there's nothing else that it does there because we have it in a different conditional. Where we just check in here if the damage cause is entity attack which if it is then we'll set combat to 50. now this can be whatever you want just know that whatever this number is divide it by five and that's how many seconds so just a little quick recap we check if the player is uh damaged by poison which will cancel the event we check in here if they currently don't have combat set up if the combat stat is zero which if it is and they were attacked by an entity then we'll just tell them that they enter combat, but in here, we'll actually set it to 50, which means that also whenever they are hit, then it will set it to 50, so it doesn't just run down and wait for it to run down before. It, it, a little bit hard to explain, but it's but if you understand it, then you understand it. So yeah, that's it for the damage event. Now we're going to go to the functions. Actually, we'll just go back real quick, go to event actions. If you created the function already, then we'll just go inside here and add an action. Trigger our function combat handler. If you didn't create the function yet, then we're going to it right now. Functions, just create a function here. I just call it combat handler. Okay, so in here we're going to have two conditionals. We're going to check first if combat is equal to one. So go in here, place that requirement. Combat, oops, combat is equal to one. Which, if it is, then we'll go inside the if actions and set combat, combat equal to zero. Now this, everything after this will run as soon as they come out of combat. So we'll just maybe send a title. We'll just get rid of the title and just add a subtitle that says in all green and bold, you left combat. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we'll create another conditional for just handling the countdown. We'll check in here if combat is greater than one, which means that it's a higher number than one. If you want, you could do greater than or equal to, and then just set this to two, but I just decided to do greater than. And then inside here, which means that they are currently in combat, then we'll take combat and we'll subtract one, 
and then we'll add another action. We're gonna create another stat. It'll be combat sec. You can call this whatever you want. I'm calling this combat sec, standing for combat seconds. And we'll just set this to our combat value. So stat dot player slash combat. So once again, we're just setting combat sec to our combat value. And then what we'll do is another change player stat. We'll set combat sec. Uh, we'll just divide it by five. So this will give us our, so our combat value is our ticks. But our combat sec value will be our okay so everything after here will run while the combat is going down so we'll just add a display action bar i get this is up to you though and i just have a pre-made message here that just says combat timer stat dot players slash combat sec and then s at the end to display how many seconds are left in the combat timer and that's pretty much it so i'll just show you real quick on how it works and then after i'll show you how you can handle checking if players are about to do something that they're not supposed to while in combat. So I have my ult here. We're just going to go up to myself and punch me. It'll say you entered combat. And at the bottom, a combat timer will appear. We'll wait till it gets to the end. Actually, we'll just hit myself again. And as you can see, it resets. But it doesn't tell us that we already entered that we entered combat again as we are already in it. And we'll just wait. And we'll see once it hits around, I think, zero. Or right now. There you go. It'll say you left combat. The action bar will go away. And now I'll show you how you can prevent people from doing certain actions while they are in combat. So the first example I'll give is if we go to house settings and commands, the default slash stuck command, also known as slash spawn, they both do the same thing. Inside here, I have a conditional in the beginning before any of the actions are ran. And inside here, we check if the combat is we check if combat is equal to zero, which if the if actions, we have nothing here, meaning it'll just continue the code after it. But if it's not zero, meaning it's greater than or less, I guess less than two, but it'll trigger the else actions, which in here, we tell the player you cannot do this in combat. We'll play a quick sound just to do a little response and we'll exit, meaning no other code will run after this. So to show you, I'm going to have my alt hit me. And now we'll start to do slash spawn. And I'll say you cannot do this in combat. But if we wait for the timer, go to down and try it now. We can do the command. If you're trying to do this with a region, just instead of telling them they can't enter, just teleport them out. Um, there's some common sense in there where you could do with other stuff. But yeah, that's the base idea. I hope you enjoyed. I'm excited to see what you guys do with this. Once again, I do have a broken wrist, so updates from me will be slow. I'm still not going anywhere. Don't worry. But yep, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.